The U.S. stock market taking a tumble Monday. There's a perception out there that the economy is either in or close to a recession. Rattling America's confidence in the economy, the downturn following a weaker than expected jobs report on Friday. Donald Trump quick to dub this the Kamala crash. If Harris wins this election, you will quickly have a Kamala economic crash. You could have a crash. You could also have a crash like in 1929, more specifically, because that's where we're headed. Meanwhile, on the campaign trail, Kamala Harris attempting the delicate dance of acknowledging voter concerns while not harshly criticizing the current administration. Yes, it is true that by many indicators, our economy is the strongest in the world. But while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high. You know it and I know it. Some analysts pointing out shielding herself from backlash over the economy could be tricky. She is the incumbent, and the incumbent party right now has a lot of baggage, notably the frustration about the state of the economy. Donald Trump still has a sizable lead on who do you think would do a better job on the economy. A new CBS News YouGov poll shows more voters think they would be better off financially under Trump's policies compared with Harris's. Trump's plan includes higher tariffs on imported goods, lowering corporate taxes, doing away with taxing tipped wages, undoing Biden's investments in green energy, and putting pressure on the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates. Harris, on the other hand, wants to raise corporate taxes, take on price gouging, ban additional hidden fees and late charges, and cap unfair rent increases, as well as caps on prescription drug costs for all Americans. With just over 90 days left until the presidential election, polling shows many Americans feel very pessimistic about the economy. And with the economy top of mind, it's expected to play a big role in who Americans vote for. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. This is a scary Monday for anyone invested in the stock market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 1,000 points and the S&P... Just finished its worst day in nearly two years. Japanese stocks suffered even more, seeing their worst drop since the Black Monday crash of 1987. CBS Austin's Betty Cross joins us live tonight. And Betty, you're, you're talking to financial experts today. What should armchair investors do right now? Should I even look at my 401k or just kind of maybe hold off for a couple weeks? They would actually tell you to hold off because the advice they gave me over and over today was don't panic and write it out. U.S. stocks tumbled today with investors rattled by reports of a slowing American economy. There's no need to panic. The economy is not in a recession. Anne Mulholland is an expert on consumer finance and says amateur investors shouldn't overreact to today's sell-off yelling fire in the middle of an arena and there is no fire and so we, we need to to really stay calm during this period of time the trigger for this latest sell-off was the disappointing july jobs report and sharp declines in high-flying tech stocks such as apple amazon and intel so even though it's hard to stay calm as the stock market reels dr craig prong at the university of houston says you should try long-term investors and you know they really can't uh and shouldn't uh react uh to uh you know, short-term fluctuations in the market this is the time to remember how much consumers like a sale stock prices are dropping so keep in mind the best overall strategy is to buy low and sell high but experts advise avoiding the once hot artificial intelligence tech stocks they were among the worst performers today. These are riskier. They're very overvalued, arguably overvalued stocks. And so there might be some consideration of moving into something a little bit more stable at this period of time. The stock market plunge has demand for U.S. Treasuries up and mortgage rates down. While a recession is still far from a certainty, the odds are going up. Goldman Sachs raised the probability from 15% to 25 percent. That the odds of, if not a recession, then a substantial slowdown in growth are pretty good. So what should you do? Well, the experts tell me bonds and certificates of deposit are certainly looking more attractive today. And what about buying a house? Well, check mortgage rates. They are also down, maybe not substantially, but a little bit. I checked today, the average rate for a 30-year fixed rate, 6.95%.
Reporting live in Southwest Austin, Betty Cross, CBS Austin News. Dave Flannery runs an apple orchard in Wisconsin and, like many Americans, has anxiety about how the economy is trending. Things are, are really uncertain, not knowing what's going to happen with interest rates and what's going to happen with the whole economy. And today, the uncertainty only grew. The U.S. government out with its jobs report, saying the economy added about 114,000 jobs last month, less than expected, and the unemployment rate is now the highest it's been since October of 2021. It's another element of evidence on top of a long string of evidence that we've had that the labor market is softening. Consumers have been telling us for quite a while now that the job market isn't as hospitable for job seekers as it was uh, a year ago, two years ago. The job news sent the stock market tumbling today, but the market had already taken some serious hits in the few days prior to this report. Why? The alarm that you see in the stock market and, and potentially among consumers is about worries that things could potentially get worse. Inflation has fueled Americans' psychological fears about the economy. A Gallup poll taken last month found seven in 10 Americans believe it's getting worse. I got adult children now who are starting out and how, how can they be able to survive with what it costs in today's world. Inflation is really hitting a lot of people in a hard, hard way. American households are, st are still understandably unhappy about the economic situation. A key reason for that is because that cart of groceries that used to cost them $100 now costs them $130. And new questions are being raised about whether the Federal Reserve has waited too long to lower interest rates. This puts even more pressure on the Federal Reserve to cut rates in September. Markets widely expect that the Fed will cut rates by at least a quarter point at its next meeting. But analysts also say we shouldn't overreact, that the U.S. economy is still very strong. The fundamentals of the economy actually are quite solid to date. Inflation has been high, but it's come way down, and it's now close to the Fed's 2% objective. This is a good labor market for people who want to work and uh, are willing to seek those opportunities, even if that may mean, for example, uh, moving locations. In the meantime, analysts offer some practical advice for us as we ride out this uncertain period. It's always good to have a nest egg. It's always good to make sure your uh, job prospects are strong. Um, I wouldn't do anything hasty, you know, don't, don't sell all of your stocks.